What's up everybody? Time for some more draft evaluations and it's time we move on to maybe the best position in this whole draft class. I I personally prefer the edge crop, but in terms of quantity, cornerback is right up there. So don't get me wrong, there are definitely areas of this team I would like to address before cornerback, especially with what we know about this team, this coaching staff, and also with the things that we don't fully understand about what their plan is. But this is a really good draft to go into with some degree of need at cornerback. You're almost certainly going to be able to find a guy that you like at some point in the draft. The, the top end is excellent. The depth is excellent. It, it's really something else. So the Seahawks, if they feel like they need to bring in a rookie or two at the cornerback position, this is definitely the draft class to do it in. So we're going to go through some guys. We're going to start with my, I would say, the top six. There's going to be a little bit of debate over the bottom end of the uh, top six, but I think that the top four are pretty indisputable the first four guys we're going to look at today are pretty much indisputably the best corners in this draft and then we'll start segueing into the lower tier guys so uh, this video is going to be about the top six later today we're going to do guys who are more in that third tier and then tomorrow we're going to start moving into the fifth tier and sleepers so Let's talk about the Seahawks right now. We lost DJ Reed, and we need to replace him. We've done some work in free agency. We brought in Artie Burns. We brought back Sidney Jones. Those two guys might be your starting outside corners to start the season. And then you've got Justin Coleman. You brought him in to compete with guys like Blair and Amadi for the nickel if Amadi is still here. But... You, you'd probably need something a little more appealing than that. Now, the good news is that Trent, Trey Brown's probably going to come back at some point, and he played well last year, so you can definitely bet on Trey Brown being part of the solution. But maybe you want to add a little something to it, or maybe you want to bring in that guy who is going to be an over-the-top blue chipper. If you want to do that, this is the draft where you could do it. These first few guys I'm going to talk about are some of the better corner prospects in recent memory. So let's start at the top and work our way down. Who are we going to get? Derek Stingley Jr.'s first up LSU product, six feet flat, 190 pounds, ran a very nice 4.340. He had a great pro day the other day, uh, did a lot to help his case on being taken in the top 10. 30.6 uh, inch arms approximately. Now, <clears throat> Stingley was kind of a difficult one because his 2019 was excellent. 38 tackles, 6 interceptions, 15 passes defensed, phenomenal playmaker, great ball hawk, got his hands on the ball, took the ball away, and since then he hasn't been as good. In 2020, he played 7 games, no interceptions, 5 passes defensed. Uh, 2021, he played 3 games, 8 tackles, no passes defensed. Uh, a handful of tackles for loss, so he was playing the run pretty well, I guess you could say, but something was missing. Now, in recent times, it seems like it's become clear that he had an injury that he has supposedly passed, which is why he was able to do so well at his pro day, but you are talking about a guy who has not played that great for the last two years, and he hasn't played that much. Now, the big boards, even with that fact in mind, every big board has him in the top 11. A couple have him in the top five. So you are probably looking at a guy who is going in the top 10 regardless, especially after that pro day. Uh, the Giants may take him if they want a man corner. Uh, the I could see the Panthers taking him if they don't want a quarterback. Um, honestly, given the fact that Stingley seems to have a clean bill of health, I think that he may very well be the first corner off the board. He's got elite sm speed, 4.3, enough said. He's a smooth mover in space. He's got good hips. He flips the hips really well in coverage. Sticks with his man beautifully. He's somebody who can blanket a wide receiver 40 yards down the field. Excellent ball hawk. 
He can jam at the line. He's strong enough to jam a receiver at the line and knock him off his route. His arms are not super long, but they're long enough. And he's, despite being mostly a man corner, is effective in zone. So if you get him, he is somebody who can play both sides of your hypothetical hybrid defense with some man and some zone. Now, the issues with Derek Stingley Jr., like I said, he hasn't done a whole lot the last two years. He has a good excuse for that, maybe, but that doesn't change the fact that you are spending a top 10 pick on a cornerback who hasn't played that well the last two years. Overall, his experience level is low because he missed so much time the last two years. Sometimes his effort is called into question. Sometimes it seems like he plays takes snaps off. And he does need to become a better tackler. And he is a little bit small. That may not be so easy. But this guy, he could be a Deion Sanders type of prospect. Okay, next up we have Andrew Booth Jr. from Clemson. He, I, I feel like he's probably going to go more towards the middle of the first round now. There was a time when I thought that Andrew Booth had top 10 potential. I don't think that anymore. But he is probably a first round pick unless something very odd happens over the next couple weeks. Same size roughly as Derek Stingley and 194 pounds, ran a 4.4340 unofficially, not at the combine though. 31 and a half inch arms, arms are plenty long enough. He has two seasons of full-time play for Clemson. Uh, 2020, he had a couple interceptions, four passes defensed. 2021 best season so far, 37 tackles, three for loss, three interceptions, five passes defensed. Everyone has him in the first round. Except for Walter Football, they have him early to mid-second. Draft Network is in love with him, and the Draft Network is my personal favorite big board. So when they say something, I listen. But clearly, this is a guy who rates to go somewhere around the middle part of the first round, I think. He's a great all-around prospect in terms of his combination of athleticism and uh, agility and his uh, speed. His speed is not as good as Stingley, but his speed is still good. He's somebody who, unlike Stingley, is always giving maximum effort. He does have potential to play slot some of the time. So if you get him, he's going to be able to play outside and inside, I think, pretty well. He's physical. He's got pretty good ball skills. He's got five interceptions over the last two years for Clemson. So there is a lot to like with Andrew Booth. I would call him at this point a bit of a sloppy tackler. He needs to work on the finer points of zone coverage. As of now, I do see him as mostly a man corner, which I don't know how much we're going to be doing that. And he's a little bit grabby sometimes, which is something you see a lot with college um, cornerbacks. And third, we are going to take a look at everyone's favorite, Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Now, this is the guy that Carol's probably getting excited about, and it makes sense why. Cincinnati Bearcats, 6'3", 190 pounds, 4.4, 140, 33.5-inch arms. He's got cobras for arms, man. Basically, Ahmad Gardner is Richard Sherman who can run faster. He is a great heir apparent to the Richard Sherman archetype. He's just faster than Sherman. And uh, if you take a look at his play over the last three seasons for the Bearcats... Three interceptions each year. Um, not a ton of plays on the ball, but he's a good tackler. He made a lot of tackles in the backfield in the most recent season. There's a lot to build on here. And every single big board had him in the top 10. Uh, two of them had him in the top 5. <clears throat> so, on the average, you actually wouldn't expect Sauce to fall to our number 9 pick. The Giants, if they don't take Stingley, are very likely to take him. Uh, you could see a team in like the, like the Texans take Sauce Gardner, and it wouldn't be that shocking. He's a special product. <clears throat> He's a special prospect if you are running a zone defense. His combination of height and length, like I said, it's like Richard Sherman on steroids. He's a great athlete, great change of direction ability, great ability to play in space. He is the dream prospect for a zone defense, playing press. He, he can jam at the line of scrimmage very well. He's always a hard worker, always giving effort. 
He's got great instincts, especially in that zone, knowing where to go, knowing where to be. He's got solid ball skills, nine interceptions over three years. His coverage metrics in college were incredible. He didn't give up a touchdown in maybe his entire career. I can't remember the exact number, but it's some insane number. He's a, he's a smart guy. This is definitely the kind of guy that Carroll gets excited about for his cover three defense. Now, will he fit in with what we're doing this year? That's something that only Carroll and Desai and Clint Hurt can know. The issues with him would be that he needs to improve his tackling. Some technique on his drive-through is a little rough when he drops back into zone and then makes a break on the ball when it gets thrown. His technique can get a little bit rough in that area, but <clears throat> I think that Sauce Gardner would develop into being, like I keep saying, the next Richard Sherman. Okay, next up we have a Washington product, and we got a couple of these in this draft. Trent McDuffie, and this guy is pretty clearly the consensus fourth best corner in this draft, and some people think that he's better than Andrew Booth. Um, I personally don't really see it that way, but McDuffie is a phenomenal prospect who will almost certainly be a first round pick. 5'11", 193 pounds, 4.4440, 30 inch arms, just shy of 30 inches on so... Right away, we have a little bit of an issue here. This guy's a little bit on the short side, and his arms are not that long. Now, granted, we've made this work with other players in recent memory, but for the most part, we know we don't really like those things. <clears throat> Nevertheless, let's keep taking a look here, because I don't think either of those things are disqualifying. He's got three seasons, including the COVID year, that you can basically throw out. He's got eight career passes defense, two career interceptions, um... The stats are not great, but the talent is undoubtedly there. And if you watch the tape, you can see why he's a first rounder. So he's very quick and agile. He's somebody who's going to be very quick to the ball. He's somebody who changes directions very well. He's great against the run. He plays very aggressively against the run. You can play him in any scheme and you can play him inside or outside. So you can do zone, you can do man, you can do cover two, cover one, cover three, quarters, I think he can translate to pretty much any kind of defense you want to play. And like I said, he can play nickel. You might see him slot into nickel some on occasional downs. He's got good instincts. And he's got a pretty high football IQ. So this is a very smart player who's going to get the most out of his significant talent. The issues with him are just his size. Is this something that Carroll is willing to spend a first round pick on? Because to get McDuffie, you were probably trading back somewhat significantly from number nine you're probably trying to get back to about 20 maybe 18 or 19 and do you want to make that investment on a guy who doesn't fit your archetype he's not great pressing at the line of scrimmage he needs to work on his jam at the line and his ball skills have to be called into question when over three years he has two interceptions and six is six and i'm sorry eight passes defensed so I don't know if this is the guy you want to spend a first round pick on if you're going to actually make that investment for the first time ever. Uh, the previous three guys, I would be open to it. McDuffie, I, I just don't know if I see it. Okay, next up we have Kair Elam from Florida, a Gator. He's 6'2", a little bit bigger, 191 pounds, 4.3940, very solid 40 time, 31 inch arms, good enough. <clears throat> and he has two productive seasons. Uh, 39 and 29 tackles, two interceptions, 11 minute passes defensed, uh, one interception and five passes defensed in 2021. Pretty much every big board puts him at the top end of the second round. A couple have him in the first. I think he'll be an early round two selection. So let's say he slips to number 40 or 41. If you didn't take Sauce or Stingley in the first, would you take Elam in the second? Uh, one interesting note about Elam is that his, um, I, I think his older brother or older cousin or something like that was Matt Elam, a uh, former safety. I think he played for the Ravens for a little bit. So so he's got football in the family because his dad played safety too. <clears throat> Great fit for zone and press schemes. He's good at both those things, zone and press. Great athlete in terms of his ability to move in space. He's a physical guy in cover coverage. He's somebody who gets up on receivers and makes life hard for them. He's got good ball skills. He's a solid, uh, I'm sorry, that, that's, I don't know how that second thing got in there. Uh, he's got good hips. He flips the hips really well in coverage. 
and he would be a reasonable fit in a Carroll defense, I think. The uh, issues with Elam are that he does occasionally get beat over the top. He struggles a little bit with vertical routes. He's a mediocre tackler, and while I did praise him for being physical in coverage, there's also a little bit of a downside there in that he can be a little grabby. He will probably draw some flags that are going to frustrate you, initially at least. <clears throat> and that's something that in Seattle we kind of encourage, but still, we don't encourage penalties. We encourage physical play within the scope of the rules. All right, one last guy, and I just included this guy because he's a top prospect. I don't see any way Roger McCreary is a Seahawk. He doesn't he doesn't bring enough to the table in terms of the Seahawk archetype. Auburn, 5'11", so kind of short, 190 pounds, 4.540, .5 so he's small and he's a little bit slow. 28.9 inch arms, so not even 29 inch arms. He's short and he has short arms, even more so than McDuffie. So that kind of rules him out unless we are completely throwing out everything that Carroll has ever prioritized in a corner. Now, that's not to say he's a bad prospect. You can see that over the last three years at Auburn, he's been productive. <clears throat> he's got somewhere around 120, 130 tackles, 10 for loss. He's got a couple of sacks sprinkled in there. He's got six interceptions and um, almost 30 passes defensed. So he's very productive. He's a good player. I just don't think he's right for this team. And the big boards, they pretty much all have him in the second except for CBS. So he will probably be a early to middle second round pick in my estimation. He's an elite athlete. There's no doubt about that. I mean, all these guys at the top of the draft are elite athletes, right? Duh. But he's an elite athlete. He's got very fast reaction times. He's an excellent tackler, which is something we didn't see with even some of the above guys. Great against the run. He never gets beat badly. Even when he gives up a catch, he's right there to make the tackle. He's very versatile in his ability to play man or zone outside or inside, whatever kind of defense you're running, in terms of his ability to handle the scheme, he can do it. He's got good ball skills as well. Six interceptions over three years is nice. Uh, the issues are just what I said, though. He's short and he's got stubby arms. I, I feel like that rules him out unless Carroll is completely throwing out his archetype. He's got some minor technique issues that can make him take a little too long to uh, get into his uh, process during a play. But I do like him. I do think highly of him. It just, I wouldn't do it for this team. And uh, that's it for the first round of corners that we're going to take a look at here. Six guys. All these guys are probably going to be top 50 picks, I would say. I would expect all six of these guys to go in the top 50. Will any of them be a Seahawk? Well, obviously, I'm a big fan of Sauce Gardner. Derek Stingley's nice. And Kyra Elam is interesting to me. Those would be my main targets right now. All right, later today, <clears throat> we're going to have more content on other corners that are probably going to go in the second day. Hope to see you guys there. Go Hawks.